So glad that we can be together again today as we spend some time studying the Word of God. You know, a question that we've got, in fact, the title of our Bible study here today that we've entitled it is, Can You Be Thankful? Sometimes giving thanks is a difficult thing, and yet God wants you to be thankful as you go through all of life. Now remember, we're talking about giving thanks during the difficult times. You have a difficult time you're going through. So many others have difficult times that they go through, and yet God wants us to give thanks thanks. And so really that's where this chapter is dealing with that truth. Can you be thankful? Last week we were talking about mind control. Are you letting your circumstance or situation control your mind or are you letting God? And we see this very similar idea. A lot of times when we get into difficult circumstances, life is tough and so we say there's nothing to be thankful for. But we want to look at a few of these truths here today. In fact, really our passage, our main passage, we'll go back and forth between, is in Acts chapter 27, verses 14 through 22. Talking about the Apostle Paul and some of the difficulties in his life. Now we know he was imprisoned and in fact ultimately he was sent to Rome and it was a long arduous process. But one of those stops along the way there was a big storm. And so we'll talk through some of the realities of this today as we look at giving thanks during difficult times. And that friend, you can do that too, not based upon who you are, but ultimately based on God. It'd be nice, at least we think it would be, if we could go through life without any difficult times or without any troubles. Maybe you remember Biosphere 2 from the 1990s. I remember hearing about that as a kid and going through, uh, just learning some of those things and then a little later on in life, studying it out a little bit. But Biosphere 2 was a series of glass enclosures that were made to act like and to mimic different conditions on different places of the earth. So there were a lot of different climates, if you will, in these glass fixtures. There was a team of scientists who lived in them uh, for a time. They were sealed in and they lived through this and tried to do different things. Is life possible? Can we control different climates and different circumstances and situations? You know, it was interesting. They, They had a number of unexpected results from this experiment. But one of those is that trees didn't do so well. And the reason was because trees are exposed to the elements, to the different storms of this life. In fact, a lot of times today, the stronger a tree becomes is because of the different stresses it goes through. The stress wood is a strong wood. When the wind is blowing strong, then it is a strong tree. It's learned to stand against the wind. And storms help us grow and develop as Christians too. It's a very similar process. So when you're going through the storm, whether it's right now or whatever storm it might be in the future, don't just wish you could get out of it. But pray and ask God to teach you through it so that you can be thankful, not just that someday you'll get out of it, but that you can give thanks to God today in the middle of the storm. Before we get into the Word of God, let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your Word. Would you help us to learn from the Apostle Paul today and learn to give thanks? Not because it's easy, but because, God, you are faithful and you are worthy of all praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Giving thanks. Acts chapter 27, verses 14 through 22. Verse 14 specifically says, But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclidon. Now that's a word we don't use often today, but we stop and we think about this. This was a strong wind. In this passage here, really we see that this was getting the Apostle Paul ready for prison in Rome. But God was using it and wanted to use it to draw others to him, to point them back to God himself. So Paul was there. He wrote several of the the prison epistles. We sometimes refer to them as this. But as we look at this time period, Paul is in captivity, which isn't fun anyway, but now there's coming a big storm. Remember, Paul had appealed to Caesar. He was unjustly arrested. He was a Roman citizen. And so finally he said, I appeal to Caesar. In fact, Acts 25 verses 9 through 12. We won't read all of that, but you can read that a little later. Acts 25 verses 9 through 12. In verse 9 it says, But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem and there be judged of these things before me? 
But Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. And so Paul's saying, no, I want to appeal to Caesar. As a Roman citizen, that is my right. And so I'm going to stand for my rights and not just give in to the difficult things going on. And so the Jews wanted to kill him. Remember, he was arrested after a riot broke out at the temple. Well, the Jews wanted to kill Paul. And he's like, wait a second, I don't want to go there. He also saw this as an opportunity that God wanted to use so he could share the gospel with others there, even in Rome. And so his journey uh, was not really a Mediterranean pleasure cruise. You know, we see people doing those today. Here in Acts 27, he's on a cruise, but not a pleasure cruise. He's a prisoner. And yet there's difficulties. When people go on cruises, they hope that it's during a nice time. If you go to Alaska, you don't plan for a hot weather cruise, but still they do it in the summer so that it's not all the winter stuff. And yet you go and you plan different things. When Paul's on this ship here in the Mediterranean, he's going and and it's kind of getting near that winter season. And Paul and all of his travels had learned some different things, but who was the prison guard? Who was the centurion supposed to listen to? The owner of the ship or prisoner? Well, the centurion ended up listening to the owner of the ship. And they said, no, it's time. It's okay. We can go out. Paul was respected. And yet the owner of the ship was believed to know so much more than Paul did. So we stop and we think through all of this. In this time of captivity, how could Paul even give thanks? Again, he gave thanks to God, but he did see some of the blessings. He was respected as a prisoner. How about Joseph in the Old Testament? Joseph was a prisoner, but he was respected. Why? Because of his character. And it's the same thing for the Apostle Paul. Here he's respected. Pastor R.B. Willett, who wrote this book, he says, We should also live in such a way that even those who may not like our beliefs will respect the way that we live and interact with them. And that's what Paul was doing here. He believed in God. The centurion didn't believe in God. He didn't believe as Jesus as the Messiah. And yet he could respect Paul because of his character. In spite of the difficulties, he did have a positive character. In spite of the difficulties, he wasn't just down on himself or down on all the people around him who were in charge, but he was focused on God, knowing he could have joy in Jesus. So Paul... He was respected. In fact, even in Acts 27, verse 3, he was able to see friends. They had stopped and they hit in the port. And Paul was able to even visit with some friends, Acts 27, verse 3. And the next day we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into his friends to refresh himself. So again, we do see that there was some respect during Paul's captivity. And so even in the middle of your storms, these are opportunities that God wants you to be able to have some respect from others, earn respect. Again, people don't always view you right. You know, I was thinking about that as I saw a news update today. Someone, a professional cyclist, was suspended from the American cycling team that he was part of because of a positive comment he made towards or about the President of the United States of America. Since when is it wrong to make a positive comment about the President of the United States? No matter what your view is on on the politics. And yet here he gets suspended for this. Now there's a couple different ways he could react. And I didn't read through all this and I didn't see how he's reacting. But friend, the reality is there are going to be things that don't seem fair to you in this world. But are you going to react with God's strength or are you going to react in bitterness? Paul could have done that, but he would not have earned the respect of Julius. And yet he did during this time of captivity. But here as we continue in Acts 27, we see some caution here. Paul gives some caution. He's saying that storms were more likely to come. Remember, we're getting into the winter season. You know, there are certain seasons of the year that we expect hurricanes. There are certain seasons of the year that we expect tornadoes. There were certain seasons of the year that they would expect the Eurocliden and that strong storm. And Paul learned a lot of these things because of his years traveling. Remember his different missionary journeys? We look at the Bible and we see, wow, three different missionary journeys. And who knows, however, other times Paul may have traveled. But Paul traveled and so he learned some of these different weather patterns. So he offered wise caution. 
And yet again, he didn't throw a fit when it wasn't listened to. He could have. Acts 27, verse 14, but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclidon. Paul could have said, see, I told you so. But he responded with God's grace. And in the middle of the storm, if you're going to ever have respect from those around you and really have those opportunities to point them back to the Savior, you've got to respond with God's grace. And that's what Paul does. See, he he was held with other prisoners, and yet he was faithful to God. He was faithful as he wasn't listened to. He was faithful as he went through the difficulties. Well, he's warning here in this passage. He was giving advice that was ignored. And yet, he was faithful to God and responded. So we stop and we think through this. He knew that the port wasn't nice for winter, and so he was cautioning them, hey, we should stay here because of the winter, and yet this, the sailors knew, hey, this isn't a nice spot to stay in the winter. And so they decided they were going to go on. But yet God wants you in the middle of difficult times to listen to advice. And again, listen to godly advice. There's all sorts of people who want to give us advice. And so we see that they entered a storm because they ignored this advice. Sometimes you enter storms because of ignoring advice. In your own life, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's another wise counselor who has challenged you, and you just ignore their advice. Yeah, 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 I heard that before. But listen to the advice. Some storms are are a direct result of your disobedience or your ignoring advice. Some storms are the result of living in a sin-cursed world. It just happens. You know, we talk about the pandemic the difficulties of the health situations going on around the world today. It's a result of living in a sin-cursed world. But sometimes storms are times when our faith is tested. When the testing of your faith should bring forth joy and peace. We see Job in the Old Testament. His faith was tested. He went through a great storm. Not because of his own sin or his own refusal to listen to advice. Yes, because he lived in a sin-cursed world, but ultimately, this was an opportunity for Job, as he was tested, to show himself strong, to show he was faithful to God, his obedient attitude toward God. So again, we see there was this caution that Paul was going through. He was giving caution. And he said, hey, this storm may come if we do this. But again, he didn't get mad. The next step we see here in this passage is that really there was chaos the chaos didn't start immediately. The storm didn't start immediately. In fact, back in Acts 27, if you work back up a few verses before verse 14, you see it seemed like everything was going well when they left this port. But then verse 14 says, but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind. So there was chaos, but it took a little bit of time to happen. Sometimes it seems like life is smooth sailing, which doesn't necessarily mean it's all going to be good. But these are opportunities for us to live with God's strength. Acts 27, verse 13, And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close by Crete. seemed all was going well. Smooth sailing sometimes is a result of God's mercy. (laughs) Life is going well, and sometimes it's God's mercy, not your obedience. Maybe there are difficulties that you've caused even because of your choices. But God is still merciful, and sometimes smooth sailing is because of his mercy. Sometimes it's because God is long-suffering and doesn't always immediately punish sin. He's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. But yet in the midst of all of life's circumstances, we must remember God does not contone wrong. He doesn't give us license to sin. He doesn't condone, condone that. Yeah, friend, God cares about you. There may be some chaos in your life, perhaps even because of choices you've made, and yet it's an opportunity for you to look back to God. We've been using this word, Euroclidon. The Euroclidon is from a Greek word that means great storm, perhaps even like hurricane winds uh, with big waves. It hid the sun and the stars uh, really for many days and nights. We see this here in this passage. Back to Acts 27, verse uh, 16. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were 
driven. And it talks about then how they were exceedingly tossed with the wind. Then the third day they cast off the tackling of the ship. Verse 20, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They really were living in a time of chaos. And you know, maybe it feels like your life is in a time of chaos right now. But God is faithful. He's merciful. These men were just trying to survive. And yet, Paul looked to God. There were many people on the ship, over 200 people that were on this ship. And we think of the the mass chaos then. It wasn't just the storm, but the yelling and the fear and so many things that were going on. All was in despair. All people that were there were afraid for their lives except there was one person who trusted God. Verse 20, And when neither the sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But verse 21 says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. He's there trying to encourage them, trying to say, you can be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. So we see these people on the ship and the difficulties and the emotional struggles they were going through. And you know, sometimes you go through a difficulty and someone says, hey, cheer up. Sometimes they just don't get it, do they? They don't completely understand. But if they're pointing you back to the Savior, you can be of good cheer. You can have comfort in God and in his word. Paul was in the same boat with them. He completely understood. Maybe you've gone through some storms and trials in the past, and so you feel that there is an opportunity you have to do a special way of encouragement to those who are going through similar circumstances. Again, when you go through difficult times, let God use you to point others to him so that you can help them be of good cheer. Not because of life, but because of God. Paul wanted them to listen to him this time. When Paul said that in verse 21, uh, or verse 22, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, he's challenging them, would you listen? Because remember, he had said, you should have hearkened to me. He wasn't holding it over their face. See, I told you so. Sometimes we do that to people, don't we? I told you you shouldn't do that. That wasn't his attitude. It wasn't a snarky, kind of uh, sassy attitude. But rather it was, hey, I really want you to listen to me this time. Where did Paul get his authority and his message? Ultimately, it was from God. An angel gave him a message, right? So we stop and we see that Paul was encouraging them and challenging them, would you listen? Because he had confidence. Paul's position made the difference in his perspective. Remember, he was the one who knew Jesus Christ as Savior. And we don't know if anybody else did or did not. There's only a few people we know details of on this ship. But Paul in verse 23 says, There stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Paul knew who he was. Friend, do you know who you are? Do you know that Jesus died on the cross for your Savior? Do you have confidence because of salvation? You're a child of the King. There's an old song that says, I'm a child of the king, a child of the king. And with Jesus, my savior, I'm a child of the king. See, Paul realized that. And so he could have confidence. He said, because I know whose I am. And this is the one I serve. Even as you go through difficult times, you can still serve. We've been talking about that throughout this book. uh, Trusting God through troubled times. You can trust God and be thankful, even in the midst of these times, because you know who God is. God used the angel in Paul's life to encourage him, to give him a message. And again, yet we know that God is ultimately in control. They could have died. There are believers throughout history who have died through difficulties and trials. And yet, God in his wisdom and in his sovereignty let Paul remain alive. In fact, God rescued everyone on that ship and let everyone remain alive. John Patton, some of you are familiar with John Patton. John Patton left Scotland and he went for uh, the South Sea Islands. I find it interesting as I've been studying some of the different people from history for the Quiet Time quotes, I find it interesting that I've come across a number of people from Scotland 
who they loved God and lived for God. Well, John Patton was one of those from Scotland, but he went to uh, the South Sea. In fact, if I remember, sometimes they're even referred to as that New Hebrides Islands. And as we stopped, there was an old preacher who said, surely you will be eaten by cannibals. And Patton replied and he said, after I die, my body will be eaten by worms anyhow. Eaten by cannibals or eaten by worms, it makes no difference to me. He was willing to go because he saw God had called him. And if chaos happened while he was going, he could trust God and be confident that God promised never to leave him nor forsake him. And yet, finally, one day when John Patton died at the age of 83, uh, he said that he claimed that area and those people for Jesus. And many of them trusted Jesus as Savior. And so, you know, you stop and you think about your life and God's calling on your life. If God's got that plan for you in the chaos, you're not going to die. You won't die until it's God's time. Arby Ouellette in this chapter says, You are immortal until God is done with you. Isn't it? I mean, so many people in our world want immortality. Of course, we know that you have it in Christ. But you can't die until God's done with you here on earth. So even in the midst of your difficult times, be encouraged and be thankful for who God is and know that you can't die until God is finished with you here on earth. Paul, he was confident that he was serving God and God was in this. And the angel gave him this message that God was not through with him. And so Paul's faith helped to carry others through the storm. Maybe God wants to use your faith during the difficult time to encourage others and help carry them through, pointing them to the Savior. Remember Acts 27, verse 25, where Paul says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. It was his faith. He was saying, hey, I believe God. You, if, even if you don't, I do. Trust him. Be of good cheer. And so really, your faith can have a positive influence on others, even in the chaos. No matter how bad the health pandemic is, no matter how bad the economy gets, or even the political situation no matter how far our nation runs away from God in the area of morality, you can believe that God is sovereign. You can believe that God's not through with America or with Stockbridge or Gregory or wherever it is that you live, Munis. You can believe that God's got a great plan and be faithful and let God use your faith to encourage others. But as much as we see the confidence that Paul had, we see that there was cowardice. That, that really the storms reveal character. They revealed Paul's character, but they also revealed the sailors' character. Remember, sailors, they understood how to travel at sea. And yet, here they were afraid. They were despairing for their own life. They were professional sailors who knew how to respond in different, different difficult times at the sea. And yet, they were scared for their lives. Sometimes we run from others during the storm. The, the sailors even began to do that. In Acts 27, really, we see that they were going to leave. And Paul stopped them and pointed out to Julius and said, Hey, these are ready to leave, and unless we all stay together, we will die. The sailors, who shouldn't have been full of cowardice, were. They were afraid of the storm. And so God wants us to trust him and not run. You can't always bury your head in the sand, can you? Sometimes we try. But sometimes we try to run from God during the storm. How do people run from God? Sometimes during the storm, people run from God uh, by blaming God. They, they blame God. And yet, He is our shelter in the time of storm. Sometimes people run from God because they drop out of church. They, they were hurt or there's this difficult time and it's the church and... So they quit church. Well, friend, God has ordained the local church for such a time as this. They stop reading the Bible. Well, God doesn't care anyway. They stop and stay away from their Christian friends. Ah, oh, they, they really don't care. I don't want anything to do with God anymore. And yet we need to run to Christ. Instead of being cowards in difficult times, we can have that confidence as Paul had. There's a new song that was written, I run to Christ when chased by fear and find a refuge sure. Believe in me, his voice I hear, his words and wounds secure. In fact, there's a number of different verses here, but one of them says, I run to Christ when plagued by shame and find my one defense, 
I bore God's wrath. He pleads my case, my advocate and friend. You can run to God who will strengthen you. Friend, you first have to go to him for salvation, but then if you're saved, you keep running to Christ. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So again, you don't have to be a coward in the midst of your difficult time. But there was compassion. Paul had compassion on these sailors and on the fellow prisoners. In verse 35, And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Why were why did he see food as important? Because remember, they hadn't eaten in many days, and there were so many fears going on. Well, Paul knew they needed strength physically to go through this difficult time and everything that was going on. Paul could be a shining light to the world because of his confidence in Christ and then choosing to live in that instead of being a coward. He had compassion towards them. And friend, God wants you to have compassion toward those around you, even if you already told them so. (laughs) I knew you shouldn't do that, but God wants you to still show compassion to them. Aren't you thankful for those in your life who have shown you compassion? Jesus says in Matthew 14, 27, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. He was walking on the water during the storm. The disciples were afraid, but God was there. Talk about having compassion. So friend, would you remind the world, but even remind yourself as you go through difficult times, God cares. And then really we see how the story is completed. We can trust God. And God took care and brought them through. Have you seen God's strength in your own life? Well, then are you living for him now, even when the difficult storms of life arise? Giving thanks to God because of his faithfulness, who God is, and the blessings he's given you even in the midst of the storm. So again, we stop and we think of the faithful things God wants to use you for right now. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Even during storms, God wants to use you to labor and to work for him, but with him, with his power. Hebrews 13 5, you can do it because he's promised to never leave you. And verse 6, to be your helper. So will you have confidence in God? You know, we could stop and look at a lot of truths, but as we wrap up this lesson here today, you know, we stop and we say spiritual advice is always more valuable than secular advice. Yes, we need to be wise and listen to secular uh, people, unsaved people, but ultimately it's spiritual people. The world, the unsaved world, doesn't understand why we should give tithes and offerings to God. And yet God tells us this. Psalm 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So be careful who you listen to. Uh, Decisions based on circumstances don't necessarily make for smooth sailing. It seemed everything was going well at the beginning of the storm in Acts 27, but it didn't mean life was going to be easy. And again, decisions based on circumstances. Don't, Don't just make decisions based on circumstances in your life. Stuff is not as important in as life itself. They were getting rid of all the tackling of the ship and throwing stuff overboard, but they were afraid for their lives. And yet another challenge from this passage is God knows exactly where you are. Remember, they couldn't see. They couldn't see the stars, the moon. They didn't know where they were. But God sent the angel right to Paul because God knew where he was. Talk about things you can be thankful for in the midst of a storm. God knows where you are. It is a blessing to be able to suffer for Jesus. God used Paul then to point others to him. So our attitude should not be based on circumstances, but rather on God's promises. So be thankful because you're looking at God and his word, not just at life circumstances. And any time is a good time to give thanks. Remember what Paul did in the midst of the storm? He gave thanks for the food and then he broke it and ate it. You can give thanks to God anytime. Last week we talked about that, being thankful for who God is and the blessings he's given you now, but giving thanks to God for the things he will do even in the future. And so God expects you to give him thanks. And then yet, even as you're going through the storm, God expects you to do what you can. The sailors had a responsibility. And even Paul, he pointed out, hey, don't let them leave. We need to be together. And so be faithful in the midst of the storm that God has allowed you to go through. And, you know, I find it interesting. There's so many other truths we could look at. But when when Paul and the others were saved, some swam. Others grabbed driftwood and floated. 
and yet God rescued them. Yet sometimes we complain, oh, I don't want to be rescued this way, or I wish this didn't happen. And yet, friend, God cares. Will you trust him and be thankful for the ways he chooses to deliver you? God sent the dirty ravens to Elijah during the drought to feed him. God had name and dip in the really in the muddy Jordan River to be healed from his leprosy. So whatever the situations in your life, would you be thankful even for deliverance that doesn't seem your favorite way? Life's problems can never keep you from God's purpose unless you let them. Remember, God's purpose for Paul's life wasn't done, so Paul continued to live for God. Will you keep living for God until you breathe your last breath? There's a song I love. As long as I have breath, I will serve you, Lord. Another verse in that song, as long as I have breath, I will praise you, Lord. You know, we stop and we can praise God and serve God. And people are watching you. Just as the sailors and others were watching Paul, people are watching you as you go through difficult storms right now. As you give thanks to God during your difficulty, they might be strengthened by your faith. They might be drawn close to the Savior. Whether they're saved or maybe be drawn to him seeing that he can save them and give them good cheer even right now so will you be thankful in the midst of the storm god's allowing you to go through not based on you but based wholly on god and the many blessings of who he is and the things he does for you father we thank you for your love and thank you for this opportunity would you help us to trust you would you help us to be thankful in the midst of storms not because we want to be even, because it's hard, but help us because we see you for who you are and there's so much we can be thankful for. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I'm so glad that you took some time here to join me today as we spent some time looking in the Word of God. I hope that whatever the difficult storm is that you are going through, that you will live for God. If you're interested in other videos that will challenge you and encourage you to be thankful in difficult times, I encourage you to click the playlist right here. Otherwise, let's continue praising God and developing the mind of Christ as we go through the rest of this week. I'll see you later.